Recently, there has been a lot of talk in the Magic the Gathering community about the proliferation of product, and many are expressing concern that this might be detrimental to the long-term success of the game. I, however, am of the perspective that this will not affect Magic the Gathering in the long term, and that it is a perfectly fine thing to have happen, it is a normal part of the way that the real world works, and that it will not cause uh, problems in the long term. And in this video, I want to present my thoughts on the topic, because I've been seeing a lot of contrary opinions to this, and I just wanted to at least get this perspective out in the mix so it could be considered, uh, If it, even if you have the opposite view, seeing someone on my side of things. Um, will hopefully give you some insight. Now, the first thing I want to say is that more products does not necessarily mean things are going to be worse for the consumer. In general, more products can make things significantly better for the consumer because they give them more options and flexibility in how to spend their money. For example, if I'm going to a store to buy a t-shirt and they only have a t-shirt in, bl in blue, which happens to be a color I like, I'm going to be a fine consumer because I was probably going to buy a blue shirt anyway. But if I'm a different consumer, I might not like blue shirts. And so the fact that the store is adding a red shirt and a yellow shirt and a green shirt is very good for me because now all of a sudden I have options that I might like. So more products can mean that there are more things that the consumer wants to buy. Now, the fundamental principle of capitalism, generally speaking, or the market economy, is that if I want to buy something from someone else, it's a mutually beneficial transaction. The other person gets to sell me something and make a little bit of profit, which profit is not an inherently bad thing. It's actually quite nice because it incentivizes people to make a good product. And they get that profit and I get a product that I am going to get utility from. And utility in this context is a term that economists use for to represent uh, enjoyment or value. So there's a... <laughs> arbitrary unit called a util that doesn't actually have any measurement, but if you say something and gives you six utils instead of three utils, the six util item would be better. But that's just a general aside. But I can derive utility from buying this product from the person and they can get some value from selling it to me. And in that way, they will know, oh, that person liked that product, maybe I should make more like it. Magic the Gathering is very similar. If they are producing products and nobody buys them, then they will simply stop producing those products because they are a company that has employees to pay and shareholders to satisfy and all of that. And so if the product is not making people happy enough to continue buying it, they will stop making that product. And so the fact that these products are continuing to be made implies to me that the products are being bought, that people are deriving enjoyment from them, and why would I rain on their parade by telling Wizards of the Coast to stop producing products that other people are finding enjoyable? Now, there is this idea that there is a perpetual amount of hype. There's always something new around the corner. There's always something new around the corner. And that this is draining for the Magic the Gathering players. But I simply don't buy this argument either, because there's always something new around the corner in the real world as well. You're always seeing previews for the next movie. You're always seeing previews for the next uh, Marvel TV show. You're always seeing previews for which football game is going to be on next week and how it's the must-watch television uh, of the world. So a lot of this entertainment media has been using this, uh, there's always something around the corner, forever. And that's just the way that it works and the way that they want to get more tickets sold to their movies and be successful as movie makers or entertainment companies or whatever it may be. Having this uh, constant uh, ability to generate excitement and hype for your product is a really good thing. And even though the more enfranchised Magic the players may wish to go back to the day where it was like, oh, there's this one big set and everyone's getting super excited for this one thing and it's a very communal thing, that's not really just the way the world works anymore. It's almost like wishing to go back to the world before Magic the Gathering Arena came out and Standard was solved much more quickly. Or the world of draft before 17 lands came out and people uh, weren't making nonsensical arguments about games in hand win rate. Different video. But still, there's this idea that you can kind of go back to the way things were and that those were the good old days. And to many people, those are because there's a little bit of nostalgia factor there. And there's also just a satisfaction to playing things the way you always, always have. But the increase in products is not to blame for this shift away. And the increase in profits for Wizards of the Coast is not inherently a bad thing because it's just more products are being sold. So 
one of the reasons why more products could be a bad thing is because of something that's called decision overload. And I'll give you an example. If you go into the store and you want to buy, let's say, a bag of Doritos, and you see three flavors to choose from, and one of them is spicy, and you don't like spicy things, so you can get rid of the flaming hot option as well, and then you really only have two options to choose from, and you got one of them the first, last time, so you choose to get the other one. And that decision process probably takes you about five to 10 seconds or something. You're like, oh, I got red Doritos last time. I'll get the blue, the blue ones this time or whatever. And similar with a lot of products. If there are, however, way too many uh, decisions to be made, for example, if there are 20 different flavors of Doritos in one aisle, it becomes much more difficult to figure out which one you want. And that's not a pleasant experience for the consumer. Now in Magic the Gathering, they circumvent this issue to some degree by having the products targeted at relatively different audiences. You have a couple of products for collectors that they can choose between. Maybe they want to get a collector's booster or they want to get a secret layer with the exclusive art of Serum Visions that they really want. There's a couple products aimed at commander players where every new set that comes out, there will be a couple of commander decks that have some exclusive cards maybe that the commander players might want. And then there's the players that are just playing the normal cards and that they can choose to get a set booster maybe if they want uh, maybe a chance at getting more cards or they just buy the singles they need or really just like the players that are getting like normal cards. There's, there's different audiences that are being targeted with these products. And one thing with this overload uh, so so said is that they're not increasing the number of standard sets that they're producing in a year They're not producing a new standard legal set every month So they're not making it so that you can't keep track of which cards are legal in the standard format Generally speaking there is an argument that is separate from this one about how Introducing artificial rotation into older formats through the printing of strong cards in like supplementary commander products uh, or modern horizons to rotate these modern and legacy formats and things like that, how that can be a detrimental thing where people get their deck for uh, older formats. And then all of a sudden it like rotates because there are better cards printed. But again, that's not really a problem with the products themselves. I'd say that's more of a design problem and pushing cards, which is again, kind of a separate video. And also they, they want to make new exciting cards for like, so they can keep people interested in the game. If there was a five year period where magic just made cards that were, like kind of boring it would be pretty bad for the game i think because people wouldn't have this excitement about oh this is a new thing to once again kind of like building excitement for the new thing which again you can argue that oh i wish it wasn't that way but that's just not really how the world works uh to some degree but and i'm not trying to speak down to people in any way i'm just saying that that that's my perspective at least uh but the the other uh argument that has been made is that it's impossible in, in regards to it's impossible to keep track uh of these all these products that are being released is i think that generally speaking there are not really many players that care about all of these products and the idea that this product is not for you is totally fine in my book and it doesn't matter if you uh have interest in every product there will maybe be one or two per year that you care about and those are the ones you'll get and the rest of the time you'll just play your deck that you've always played your commander deck that maybe you add a couple cards to or maybe you've got a modern deck you really like and the fact that there's been a bunch of extra sets really doesn't affect you and it's just a positive for the people that are interested in those sorts of things and that's my perspective on the whole the whole topic i personally have not been affected by the increase in number of products because i don't really get a lot of paper products and if i see a really cool one or a really cool card i'm like wow that's a really cool product uh, maybe i'll consider getting that one or oh i have there, there's these cool new like commander deck that's got a cool theme or a cool commander in this deck or like i i don't really have a problem with seeing a product and then thinking yeah i don't really want to buy that um the one last thing i will note is that there can be products that are very bad that decrease customer confidence in the game so like magic 30th anniversary edition i think there was such a negative response to that product because it was really marketed poorly and also the product itself was a bunch of proxy cards so i don't think it's a controversial take to say that it was widely uh panned by the critics but a product like that that is advertised as a celebration of the 30th anniversary of the game can be harmful to your consumer base because it's a product that people were excited for and then it just gets jacked the price is so high that it's like okay that's not something i can ever get and i thought i'd be included in this celebration and all of a sudden i'm not and that's like that's a bad feeling for the customer and that can turn them away from your game but simply in like increasing production of other products like seeing two new commander decks every set or a couple extra secret layers and like people citing these numbers like man there were eight sets this one year and there are 25 this year or products not sets but like eight products this year and there were 25 this year 
um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And as long as people are still buying the products, I don't think there's a problem with the way the system is set up. Um, uh, because it, even if I have no interest in it and like, it doesn't make sense for me to want to rain on somebody else's parade because if, if they're making it, presumably someone is buying it and that's a better makes, makes, makes everybody happy because they get to make a product and everyone else gets to get it. Anyway, that's going to do it for this, uh, kind of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments below, um, what your perspective is on this whole topic. And if you enjoyed my, uh, hearing my perspective, or if you want more depth on any of my takes, but yeah, that's going to do it. I'll talk to you next time.